Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the Sky ATP Web Protection CLI Learning Byte. So here is our example. In the example on the slide here, we have VSRX1 that connects with User1, and then VSRX1 then connects with the internet. And user one can access things on the internet, such as that malware server up there, to download stuff through HTTP. So, for the criteria of this example, VSRX1 is already enrolled with SkyTP, and we want to block malicious file downloads. Then, we also want to block users from communicating through VSRX1 if they have already downloaded malicious files through HTTP. So, there's two main concepts we want to block malicious files from being downloaded, and then if a user does download a malicious file, we want to stop them from communicating through the VSRX device because they could be infected. So let's go ahead and jump to the CLI of VSRX1 and get this started. All right, so here is VSRX1. We want to hop into configuration mode. Then we want to go under the services, advanced anti-malware hierarchy, and we want to configure a policy here. Set policy, call this LBs-TPP, and that's for threat prevention policy. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is in the CLI, they're called advanced anti-malware policies. However, in the JWeb and also security director, they are called threat protection policies. So just keep that in mind. That's why we're calling it a threat protection policy here as well. Then we want to specify HTTP. We want to specify an inspection profile. We can use the default profile. That'll work fine. And then let's go ahead and configure an action of block. And then we want to set a verdict threshold. And we can set that. We didn't specify that in the criteria, but let's go ahead and set this verdict threshold to seven. And then we want to go to the, want to go up one and go to the security intelligence workspace. And we want to go into a profile. We're going to name this profile lbs-tpp underscore ti for threat intelligence dash profile. Then we want to specify a category of infected hosts. And that doesn't autocomplete. And the capitalization needs to be as I'm showing you here. It needs to be capital I and capital H with an underscore in between the infected and hosts. We'll call this rule. Okay, so set rule. We need to specify rule first then. We'll just call this rule one. We're going to match threat level. Specify the threat levels we want to permit. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we want to specify an action. We're going to say action permit. Then we want to specify a rule, rule two. We want to match threat level seven, eight, nine, ten. And then rule two, we want to set an action. And we're just going to block and drop that traffic. Then we need to set a policy and reference that profile. Referencing the profile for the infected host. So that's the configuration for what we're doing there under security intelligence. I don't believe I showed the advanced anti malware configuration. It's pretty basic with what we're doing there, though, but might help to show that again. So we need to apply this to a security policy. From the client zone to the internet zone. So the user one is in the client zone. So this is an example of a normal policy and not a unified policy. You could use a unified policy and it would be perfectly fine here. Just keep that in mind. So we have to specify the advanced anti-malware policy. And notice that we have to specify an action of permit before we can get to advanced anti-malware policy. Then we have to specify security intelligence policy. And that's what that configuration looks like. Let's go ahead and commit that. Okay, it looks like we made a mistake here, and I, I think I know what the problem is. Let's go back to the services, security intelligence workspace. And you can see here at the bottom under the policy, I put infected underscore host. That actually needs to be infected dash host. So let's go to that policy. And that should help. Okay, so that committed successfully. 
Let's go ahead and jump to the user one device and see if we can download something malicious. All right, so here is the client device, and the client device already has a web page open to the fake malware server. And let's go ahead and update these files to regenerate them. And then let's go ahead and click the malware file link. And look at this, gives us an error saying, hey, we can't save this file. I think it might be because of Sky ATP, call me crazy. Let's click OK. Let's try to update these files again. Try to download again. No, still same problem. Okay, let's try this one more time just in case. Okay, seriously though, I am just making sure that I'm downloading enough malware to make sure I get put on the infected host list. Uh, that is, the client gets put on the infected host list. Okay, so it does take a few minutes to get put on the infected host list and then for that information to be transmitted to the VSRX1 device. So I'm just going to set up a running ping for that fake malware server. And when that ping stops is when the VSRX1 device is blocking the traffic. So with that, I'll go ahead and pause this video and I'll start it back up once the traffic is blocked. All right, so traffic has been blocked. Took about a minute, maybe a little more to block that traffic. So I do want to show you, it's not just the malware server that the traffic is blocked to. Can't ping anywhere through the SRX. That's because all that traffic is being blocked from this client device. So let's go ahead and jump back to the VSRX1 CLI and have a look at some things. All right, so here is the VSRX1 CLI and let's look at what's in the infected host feed. And we can see here that we do have one host. The IP address is 172.29.1.101. And we can see in the feed category that it is in the infected host feed. And so that's perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. So let's look at the show services, secured intelligence statistics. And we can see in here that under the category of infected hosts, that we have a bunch of sessions that are being dropped. And so that's perfect. That's what we want to be seeing. We want to see those sessions get dropped. And the next thing I want to show you is the show services, advanced anti-malware statistics. And we can see some good information in here. We can see under the advanced anti-malware session statistics section, that we do have some HTTP sessions that were active, blocked, and also permitted. And so we can see that we have three blocked. That's great. Those are the three malware files we attempted to download. And then if we look at the advanced anti-malware file statistics, we can see that there was three file submission successes for HTTP. And then we see that there's a bunch that wasn't needed. And then we have file verdict meets threshold. We have three under HTTP as well. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want to be seeing in this scenario. So let's go ahead and jump to the Sky ATP web interface and have a look at a few additional things. So here is the Sky ATP web interface for our realm that we are using. And we can see here that we do have the 172.29.1.101 host in the monitor host workspace. And it has a threat level of seven which means it is included in the host feed, the infected host feed that is. And we can see we have some malware hits. The state of investigation is open. Now I do want to point out that it shows four malware hits. And that might be a little deceiving because we only downloaded three files, right? Well, this is a host that I used before to do some testing. And so that's why you see more than just the three malware hits that we did in this learning byte. So let's go ahead and click on that host identifier. And we can see when malware was downloaded. We can see that malware was downloaded in the past and that the host was cleared. We can see that under the threat settings with the host threat level graph. We can also see that the host attempted to download multiple malicious files. And we can click on this malicious file link and get more information about this malicious file. We can see the threat level top indicators, the prevalence, as well as other information, such as some general information that's going to give us some general information about this malware file, the name of it, the MD5 and SHA-256 hashes, category, size of the file, malware name, things like that. And we also show which host, which is just the one host, who has downloaded this file and the times that those files were downloaded. We can look at behavior analysis, which will show the behavior of the actual malware and what parts of that behavior Sky ATP found really scary. Like the evasion, we see that as a high level for the behavior categories. We see persistence, which is a low level. We see targeting, things like that. So this will help us understand more about the behavior. We have network activity as well that we can go to, see which domains it contacted, things like that. 
contacted IPs and DNS activity. And then we can also look at behavior details to get more information about this malware file. The last thing I want to show you is we can go back to the host workspace, click on the host itself, and say that we've gone through, we've talked to the user, we've cleared off the malware from the device. Well, now we can say the investigation status is fixed. And this takes it off the infected host feed. And this does take a minute, it takes about five minutes to take it off the infected host feed. But once it's off the infected host feed, the host will be able to communicate through the VSRX1 device again. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure Sky2P web protection, advanced anti-malware functionality using the CLI. Then we demonstrated how to verify that as well using the CLI, as well as some of the Sky ATP web user interface. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.